Are you the head of a large homeland security bureaucracy whose funding depends on your supposed ability to foil large-scale terror plots in spectacular fashion? An attorney general in hot water over knowingly selling guns to Mexican drug lords that resulted in thousands of murders? A White House official who's worried that the public is just no longer scared by turban boogeymen? Well, today on the How To Podcast, we tell you how to foil your own terror plot. In order to bust a fake terrorist cell that you yourself funded and created, you'll need a bunch of total fucking dipshits with intelligence in the bottom quartile, preferably homeless people, as they can more easily be bribed with food and rent money. Money for bribing, equipping, and supporting your fake terror cell, although this can obviously come from the taxpayer funds you have access to, an FBI or government informant, and a cocksuck lapdog corporate media that will breathlessly report everything you say as gospel truth without the slightest bit of skepticism. Once you've assembled these ingredients, you're ready to begin setting up and then busting your very own fake terror threat. Step 1. First, gather your team of low-grade morons at the local bus station or abandoned warehouse. The suspects are Midwesterners who said they wanted to strike out against corporate America. Federal prosecutors say this man, Rezwan Fardas, a 26-year-old American citizen, wanted to help al-Qaeda kill Americans. Well, Don and Christine, a federal investigator, say the suspects are four men with a shared hatred for America. Although the seven suspects are described as al-Qaeda-inspired, law enforcement sources tell CBS News there is no evidence tying them to any terrorist group. Step 2. Next, give your crack squad of intellectually challenged fuckwits a prescripted terror plot to aim at. Keep in mind, the more ridiculously implausible the plot is, the more likely it will be to generate those much-needed headlines when you later swoop in and pretend to bust them. They plan to blow up the heavily traveled span over the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. The alleged plot is chilling. Fardis wanted to pack large remote-controlled model planes with C-4 explosives and crash them into the Pentagon and U.S. Capitol. Allegedly led by Narsil Batiste, the group had visions of raising an Islamic army pledged to Osama bin Laden, and according to the government's indictment, was conspiring to provide material support to al-Qaeda and wage a full ground war against the United States. And though it reads like the pages of a Hollywood script, the impact would have been very real, and many lives would have been lost. Step 3. Finally, have your pre-planted FBI agent or government informant provide this band of patsy troglodytes with all of the supplies and equipment needed to proceed with the fake plan, regardless of whether or not they would ever be able to actually acquire any of these provisions without your help. The FBI began its investigation last year after it says Fardis told an informant about his desire to wage jihad against the U.S. The FBI sent undercover agents posing as al-Qaeda recruiters to meet Fardis. Prosecutors played video of Hussein and four alleged would-be bombers planting what they thought were explosives outside of Jewish houses of worship in the Bronx in May of last year. The devices were fake and supplied by the FBI. Aided by an informant posing as an al-Qaeda operative, federal agents captured these grainy images of the group's meetings held in this rundown warehouse in one of Miami's poorest neighborhoods. Step 4. Now go in and arrest the clueless douchebags you funded, trained, and equipped. If you've done everything just right, the government toady shitstain media will report everything you say about this ridiculously unlikely terror plot as if they were golden jewels of truth dripping from the mouth of Jesus himself. U.S. officials say they've smashed an Iranian plot to bomb Saudi Arabia's ambassador in Washington with paid help from a Mexican drug cartel. Motivated by hate and bent on killing their neighbors. Investigators say the four men from our area used their faith to justify planned attacks on houses of worship. John Miller is joining us now. John, how does blowing up the bridge further their fight against corporate America? Well, it's a little muddled, Scott, but their theory was that, A, it would force the government to put security on every bridge in the country, and that, that would cost money, and that, B, it would mess up traffic and keep people from getting to work at those big companies. A lot of people say these guys who wanted to blow up the Sears Tower and FBI buildings are just a collection of misfits and wannabes, nothing to worry about. I think this is actually an update of the Islamic extremist plan for the perfect day. Pro tip. If anyone from the media bothers to press you on any of the actual details of your fantasy scenario, admit everything, change the subject, and pray that no one notices. Did the uh, 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 man have any actual contact with any members of Al-Qaeda that you know of? Any... Yeah. The, the, answer to that, the answer to that is no. Did you find any explosives, weapons? No, and, and, you, and you raise a, a good point. This has been a public service announcement from the friends of the FBI, DHS, and DOD. 
helping to keep America stocked with ass-clown would-be non-terrorists who can't tie their own shoelaces since 9-11-2001. Because ignorance is strength. 